Welcome to Understanding the Bible with Pastor Ron Knight, an outreach ministry of Northern California Grace Fellowship located in Sacramento County. Now, here's your host, Pastor Ron. Thank you for joining us for Understanding the Bible, the show where the Bible is taught in a plain and clear way for all to understand. The goal of our ministry is to glorify our Lord Jesus Christ and to help you understand and enjoy His Word. We seek to do this on the radio by answering the questions that you, the listener, submit to us. Each week we will answer your questions in detail using the Scriptures. So we invite you to get your King James Bible, something to take notes on, and search the Scriptures with us as we seek to answer your questions from the Word of God. Now, my friend, we've been looking at a question that we, this ministry here at Understanding the Bible and NorCal Grace Fellowship, ask you, the listener. Since we recently moved to this new day, we wanted to ask a question about why Paul? And my friend, we've been looking the past few weeks at why is Paul in the Bible? And my friend, instead of speculating and and making you know, just guesses and so forth, what we desire to do and what we have attempted to do is to allow the scriptures, yea, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, to tell us why Paul is in the Bible. We saw last few weeks that Paul is not the 13th apostle. There were only 12 apostles who would sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. One apostle per tribe. So there weren't 13, there were 12. That's what the Lord says. We saw that Paul, Saul, didn't even qualify to be an apostle, even if he desired to be under that earthly kingdom program. We saw in Acts chapter 7, where Saul shows up, he was the chief persecutor of the believing remnant of Israel, those Messianic Jews who trusted Jesus as the Son of God, their Messiah. We saw that he was persecuting those Jews in Acts 7, Acts 8, and even in Acts 9, when the Lord Jesus Christ himself came back from heaven's glory and save Saul on the road to Damascus. And what we've been seeing, my friend, based upon Paul's own testimony in the book of Acts, recorded by Luke, Acts 22, we see that Paul had a ministry that he received of the Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 20, it was to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And my friend, why Paul is in the Bible is the most important question for you as a believer. If you're saved today, If you're a member of the body of Christ, if you, someone who put their faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross, then the most important question is why Paul? Because it is going to be the Apostle Paul that teaches you about your salvation. If you're saved today, it was Paul's gospel. Paul uses that term, my gospel, three times. Romans chapter 2, 16. Romans chapter 16, verse 25. And 2 Timothy 2, 7 and 8. He's talking about something unique and distinct for him, my friend, something unique and distinct to him. And my friend, it is that doctrine called sound doctrine. Paul calls it sound doctrine that you and I need to know as believers today. Well, where we left off last week is Paul giving an account again in Acts chapter 26 about that road to Damascus salvation and commissioning of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you will. Go with me to Acts chapter 26, verse number 13. He said, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journey with me. Last time, my friend, we saw that as Paul is recounting this road to Damascus revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, he says it was at midday, my friend. It was in the middle of the day, right there in the Middle East where it's hottest, where the sun is shining, it's brightest. But Paul sees this light that's brighter than the sun. Now, what he's seeing, obviously, is an appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's it's appearing there. And my friend, it's interesting that Paul says it was brighter than the noonday sun. You know, my friend, in prophecy, in God's plan and purpose on the earth with the nation of Israel, you see that when the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels as he is near the coast of Tyre and Sidon. By the way, we're going to talk to you about this, what's called the Mount of Transfiguration, where the Lord Jesus Christ, his glory shone, and he was bright as the sun and so forth. Moses and Elijah appeared to him, the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, Moses representing the law, 
Elijah representing the prophets, two witnesses that would become manifested before the Lord, comes back and sets up his earthly kingdom. Well, that Mount of Transfiguration, interesting enough, that mountain is not named, but a dear brother in the Lord who researches out fantastically have very compelling evidence because it was in the coast of Tyre and Sidon, modern day Lebanon and so forth, called the anti mountains of Lebanon today. It was most likely that mountain was Mount Hermon. It's very uh, important in the rebellion of Satan. It was the very mountain over there in modern day Lebanon where the fallen angels came down to receive worship. Yea, they came down in Genesis 6 to cohabitate and to marry the daughters of men. And that's where you see those giants and so forth in the Old Testament, especially that fought against the nation of Israel. And yea, the ones even before that, that were destroyed in the flood of Noah. And so, my friend, it was very apropos that the Lord Jesus Christ goes to the very spot where those fallen angels descended and were worshipped by men. And he is transfigured right there at that mountain, showing the superiority of his kingdom. So I thank that dear brother for that diligent study and sharing it with us. And my friend, it makes sense because there you go. You have the Lord Jesus Christ coming down. And it says in that account that he was as bright as the sun. But my friend, here in this account by Paul about his road to Damascus experience of the Lord Jesus Christ, notice in Acts chapter 26, it was at midday, but it was above the brightness of the sun. There is something above even the glory of Jesus Christ's earthly kingdom, my friend. And what would that be? Well, his heavenly kingdom, the glory of God's grace, the glory of God's mystery message. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, speaking of his message given to him by the Lord Jesus, the mystery of Christ, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had Satan known what the Lord would accomplish through his cross work to get back not just the earth, he would have given him the earth, but the heavenly places where Satan has strongholds and principalities and powers along with him. And one day, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to clear out those heavenly places that are unclean and unpure because of the satanic rebellion. And he's going to place the church, which is his body, the body of Christ. That's what we were created for, my friend. When we ask why Paul, the answer is that God is creating a new agency, the body of Christ, beginning with Paul, 1 Timothy chapter number 1, verse 15 and 16. Paul was the first member of the body of Christ. The church for today did not start in Acts 2. Nothing new started in Acts 2. Acts 2, Pentecost. Pentecost was one of the seven feast days of the nation of Israel. There were all Jews there, Acts 2, verse 5 and 6, no Gentiles. The only Gentiles that were there, they were Jewish proselytes. They circumcised and kept the law. They became Jews. There were no Gentiles there like you and I. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. The people were added to the church, 3,000, 5,000, so forth. But when you rightly divide the word of truth, you understand that Pentecost was a continuation of Messiah's church in the four Gospels. Peter was the head of that. Paul was saved and Paul was commissioned in Acts 9 for a new agency. When Israel fell at the stoning of Stephen in Acts 7, Jesus Christ, yea, God the Father, sent the Lord Jesus Christ to Saul and God the Father changed the dispensation. He changed it from law to grace. God the Father changed his people. He changed it from the nation of Israel to the church, which is his body, which is made up of both Jew and Gentile in one body by the cross, Ephesians, Paul says. God changed the destiny. No longer is the earth the hope of glory. It is now the heavenly places, my friend. And God changed. He changed from his earthly program of prophecy, that which was made known out of the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. Peter says in Acts 3, verse 19 through 21, to the mystery program for the heavenly places. Romans 16, 25, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, If you have heard of the dispensation of grace, which is given unto me, how that by revelation he, that's Christ, made known unto me the mystery, where I wrote of before in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is revealed now unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. My friend, what God is doing today was a secret, a mystery, not made known to the sons of men before the Apostle Paul. 
When you rightly divide the word of truth, you understand that although all of God's word is for us, all 66 books of your Bible, Genesis through Revelation, are for your learning. We ought to know them. But you have to understand something, my friend. Not every book of the Bible and not every verse in the Bible is written directly to us and about us. Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly, now watch this, dividing the word of truth. And with the ministry of the Apostle Paul, my friend, God began a new program called the Dispensation of Grace. It's a temporary dispensation that has lasted nearly 2,000 years. It's a temporary dispensation where God is calling out a people from among both Jew and Gentile, all nations, not just Israel, all nations, where God is saving Gentiles, not like he will in the future through Israel, yea, but through their fall. And my friend, why Paul is in your Bible is to explain this. If you're going to know the Lord Jesus Christ today, you're going to get to know him through Paul because it is Paul's gospel of grace that saves. It's not the gospel of the earthly kingdom. It's the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20, 24. The preaching you need to hear, it's not the four gospels in early Acts. It is the 13 letters of the apostle Paul, Romans through Philemon, and yea, all of God's word rightly divided. Now, my friend, when you study out the 13 letters of Paul, it doesn't mean you don't go to the Old Testament. Paul quotes the Old Testament a lot, especially in his early epistles when he would go into the Jewish synagogues in the book of Acts. But my friend, make no mistake about it, that today you must understand all scripture in light of Paul's revelation of the mystery. In 2 Timothy chapter number 2, Paul says, verse 7, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. You're going to have to understand all of God's word rightly divided in light of Paul's revelation of the mystery. Here in Acts chapter 26, verse 13, he says, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun. And it's the glory of God's grace, what he's doing in the heavenly places, that is even brighter than what he's going to do in the earthly kingdom here on earth. Well, verse number 14, it says, And when we were all fallen to the earth... I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. Now, my friend, watch what the Lord says to Paul. Verse 16, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. So here's the purpose. To make thee, see, First person singular, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, the vision and revelation there, appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Paul is going to get multiple visions and revelations of the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 12, Paul says, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Notice in verse 17 of Acts 26. Delivering thee from the people, that's the people of Israel, and from the Gentiles, those are the rest of the nations, unto whom now I send thee. So he's going to separate him from all people and send him with the message of grace to everyone. Now here's what he's going to do. Verse 18, to open their eyes. Now although Paul could do miracles and open blind eyes as an apostle of Jesus Christ, he's talking about spiritually here, to have the eyes of their understanding enlightened. And to turn them from darkness to light, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, his dear son. And from the power of Satan unto God. Satan is their God, little g, the God of this world. When you get saved, God is to become your God. Verse number 18, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. Remember in time past, it was remission of sins. Now it's forgiveness. Remission means it can come back. Forgiveness today. We're not on a short account system of forgiveness in order to get to heaven today. The moment you trust Christ in his shed blood, you have everlasting life as a free gift. No works where your sins and your commission of sins, your lifestyle of sin, where it affects you negatively. My friend is at the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to you stick with us. We're going to talk more and more about the judgment seat of Christ, because most of Paul's epistles deal with that issue of what to do after you're saved. How to redeem the time and the motivation, my friend, for you and I as believers to redeem the time. What I'm doing right now, studying God's word, sharing it with you. This is what God desires for us to do with our time. Okay. With our time, 
talent, and treasures be a part of what he's doing, making known the mystery of the gospel. Well, that's what you do. And the motivation is the terror of the Lord. We persuade men. At that judgment seat of Christ, those who are faithful, they will get praise of God. Those who are not, there's going to be loss, suffer loss. And my friend, Northern California Grace Fellowship right here in Sacramento County, as well as our outreach ministry, Understanding the Bible. We have a weblog by dear sister back in Minnesota. We have articles, Bible answers, rightly divided, dot blogspot dot com. We have our YouTube channel, NorCal Grace, all one word. For those in the area, we have a television program and we have an assembly. There's enough here for you to redeem the time so that you might not suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ. But you have to redeem the time. The days are evil and they're short. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe, Paul says in Romans. Well, now you can receive forgiveness of sins. If you're not saved today, if you don't know for sure, you have eternal life as a present possession. No one ever loved you enough to ask you that. Wait till the end of the program and I'll show you. You just have to trust the Lord Jesus Christ shed blood what he did on the cross, and God will save you. Well, you receive forgiveness of sins, my friend. What else? And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now, that's two things, my friend. That forgiveness of sins, that's your justification. That's your salvation. You become an heir of God. But God wants you to not just get into the heavenly kingdom as a citizen, He wants you to reign in the heavenly kingdom as his regent, his joint heir, my friend, to inherit jointly the rule and reign of the heavenly kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friend, the only way you can do that is you have to understand the mystery of Christ. And the only way to understand the mystery of Christ, you have to understand why Paul. You have to understand Paul's epistles. So we're going to be going through these things. So let's go through some of the verses from the Apostle Paul. We already looked at chapter 1 of Romans, verse 13, where Paul says, He's the one who's going to get fruit among the Gentiles. Romans eleven thirteen, Paul says, I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, not himself, but his office. In Romans sixteen twenty five, Paul says, Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, just going right on through Paul's epistles, go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Paul talks about the judgment seat of Christ. It's going to be built upon the foundation he laid. Notice in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10, he says, according to, or in line with, according to the grace of God, my friend, that's the gospel of grace, not the gospel of the earthly kingdom. You have to rightly divide the gospels. Over in Galatians chapter number 2, Verse 7 through 9, Paul says the gospel of the circumcision was committed unto Peter and the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto Paul. That's two separate gospels. One part of that Jewish, Israeli, Hebrew circumcision program given to Abraham. One, according to pure grace, uncircumcised to the Gentiles. Paul says, according to 1 Corinthians 3.10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me. As a wise master builder, Paul's the chief architect. He is the one who God gave the blueprints to. And my friend, just like when Moses was on Mount Sinai and God gave him the blueprints, the building blocks of the nation of Israel itself in the law, God gave the Apostle Paul the blueprints, the building block of the church, which is his body, the body of Christ for grace. It's the grace of God. Paul says in chapter 3, verse 10, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Paul laid that foundation, my friend. It's the grace of God. It's the mystery. And another built it thereon. So there's other ministers after Paul. But let every man take heed. Here's a warning. How he buildeth thereupon. My friend, if you don't build upon the right foundation with the right building materials, the gold, silver, precious stones has to do with the doctrines of the apostle Paul then you're going to suffer loss. You're going to be building with wood, hay, and stubble, and that stuff will be burned. You'll suffer loss. Now, you won't lose your salvation. Paul goes on to say, he shall be saved, yet so is by fire. But my friend, you won't qualify to rule and reign with Christ in the heavenly places. You're going to be a citizen of heaven. You have that now. You get a new body to live there, but you won't rule and reign. That goes to faithful, loyal members of the body of Christ. 
That's why you have to rightly divide the word. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. He's going to deny us reigning, my friend. You're not crowned unless you strive lawfully, 2 Timothy 2. The foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal, 2 Timothy 2, 19. The Lord knoweth them that are his. He knows those who are faithful and loyal. And just like David with his mighty men, when he took the throne of Israel and all those men who were loyal to him, who sacrificed for him, he made them the mighty men of his kingdom. The same with the Lord Jesus Christ today. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 16. As Paul wants to explain what God is doing today, he says, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Verse number 14, he says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you. Paul was the one who got these folks saved in the book of Acts. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. We're going to pick this passage up next time. For those who desire, Sundays at 5 p.m. on Comcast Cable, we have Understanding the Bible Studies in the Book of Romans. That's at 5 p.m. Comcast Cable, Channel 18, UVerse TV, Channel 99. If you have questions in the future, send them to me. Even if they don't make the radio, I answer them through email and so forth. Give me time, I'll get back to you. Well, that's all the time we have for today. So remember, God loves you. His son, the Lord Jesus Christ, died on the cross for you. If you simply trust that and that alone, he will save you this moment. Until next week, I'm Ron Knight saying, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Understanding the Bible with Pastor Ron Knight. The outreach ministry of Northern California Grace Fellowship, located in Sacramento County. Pastor Ron invites you to submit your questions to be answered on air and to join them for live Q&As twice a week. For more information or to leave your questions, call 916-514-3551. That's 916-514-3551. Or... Contact them online at norcalgrace.com. That's norcalgrace.com. This program is listener supported, so if you've been blessed by these studies, please partner with us. Now, on behalf of Pastor Ron and the Saints at Northern California Grace Fellowship, thank you for joining us for Understanding the Bible.